Good morning. It's Monday, November 18th, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, The Embrace of God's Peace, and our scriptures Isaiah chapter 60 and Revelation chapter 21. First of all, in Isaiah, we have God's promise of peace. I will make peace your leader and righteousness your ruler. Violence will disappear from your land. The desolation and destruction of war will end. Salvation will surround you like city walls, and praise will be on the lips of all who enter there. No longer will you need the sun to shine by day, nor the moon to give its light by night. For the Lord your God will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set. Your moon will not go down, for the Lord will be your everlasting light. Your days of mourning will come to an end. All your people will be righteous. They will possess their land forever, for I will plant them there with my own hands in order to bring myself glory. The smallest family will become a thousand people, and the tiniest group will become a mighty nation. At the right time, I, the Lord, will make it happen. And then the Apostle John remembers this promise. The city has no need of sun or moon, for the glory of God illuminates the city, and the Lamb is its light. The nations will walk in its light, and the kings of the world will enter the city in all their glory. Its gates will never be closed at the end of day, because there is no night there, and all the nations will bring their glory and honor into the city. The picture of an untroubled existence where there are no mass shootings at malls or schools and where there's no threat of war or climate catastrophes is more than a welcome thought. It's the longing of people everywhere who possess sanity. There's no scenario for anyone of goodwill and conscience that includes conflict or strife and killing. For those who follow Christ, he who is named the Prince of Peace This is our focal point of eternity, living in peace and righteousness with our loving God. For as long as I can remember, whenever this subject surfaces, whether in church as a sermon or study, or in a casual conversation, or just a time of private study, my heart goes into longing mode. That is to say, I get a longing for Beulah Land, that sweet, unshadowed, and restful place where things make sense and the tears have been wiped away. And truth be told, it's way more than longing. I get impatient. I think of Grandma Schmidt's sweet smile and that starched apron on my cheek when she hugged a three-year-old. I think of her daughter, my mom, before I was old enough to go to school, and we would pass afternoons on a rainy day making cupcakes or reading a story together. And I think about the family I've not yet met, grandma's parents and their grandparents and theirs and theirs, and how the family came about all the way back to Adam and Eve. While nostalgic remembrances like these are part of memory trips and rainy afternoons, They're also the prods to spiritual inventory and reshaping what will happen with our lives tomorrow. The meaningful ways we remember our lives is what compels us to make that meaning holy in the sight of our Redeemer. In short, as Apostle Paul put it, we respond to the call of God on our life. Ephesians 4.1 Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. For you today, the thoughts of family reunion and glory are are wonderful. But they're only a pale foreshadow of spending the first 10,000 years getting to know the one who died for me, rose so I could too, and is working on my heavenly home right this moment. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.